Okay, so we got 46, 47, 48, 49, and 50. Yes, I have successfully identified 50 shades of gray. Hey everybody, welcome back to my channel. I have a special treat for you tonight. We're going to have our first installment of what I hope will become a series of book club videos in which we discuss books and uh, bookish things. And my first installation will be something that may come as a surprise to some people. And I just buckle up because I'm gonna be filling your heads with information and we're gonna be going through a whole bunch of things about books that may surprise you. So. First of all, um, I got a new setup with a really boring wall behind me. The lighting I think is a little better and I got a tripod, but now I'm realizing like I'm chopped off here. So um, I don't know what I'm gonna do because I'm just like a talking head. <laughs> Hang on. All right, I don't know. It probably can't be helped. I don't know how the sound quality is. But we're just gonna we're just gonna jump right into it, and I promise I will continue to work on my technical um, issues and get the tripod and all of my lighting and sound and, and uh, set type issues worked out. But I thought this was a little bit important to share. Now, if you are paying attention to the world, you may know that there's a movie opening today, February 9th, which is called Fifty Shades Freed. And it is the third in a series of movies that are based on a series of three books, shockingly enough. And so I'm going to sort of be discussing those. And the first thing that I'm gonna say is that it's not actually going to be about these books or movies, because to be fair, I haven't read the books or seen the movies. This is a lot more related to sort of the background of the books and movies and some other stuff. And so I haven't read the books and I haven't seen the movies and there are reasons for that. And the reasons for it may surprise you. So buckle up, hang with me, and we're gonna go through a lot of information. But first there's something I have to get off my chest. Uh, I've gotta come out of the closet and admit some things that I never thought would really be relevant to anything that I would share. And not surprisingly to a lot of people, but I am in what are called fandoms. Hang right there. Fandom. A fandom is what you think it might be. It's a collection of fans and a lot of times they have a lot of um, interaction with the advent of the internet. Things have gotten a lot more intense and people have um, fan websites, fan chat boards, all kinds of things. And one thing that you often will get is when people start getting together and discussing and learning about their favorite books, movies, TV shows, what have you, um, they produce like some fan related content. So we've got fan fiction. And this is what it, this video is mostly gonna be about. Yes, I do read fan fiction or I have, I don't read that much anymore because I don't have time. But once upon a time, I did read fan fiction and I have reasons for thinking it's actually a, a good thing to do. And um, I have reasons for thinking that it's good for um, creative people, writers like JK Rowling, um, people that make movies. It's good for them to have these fan communities that are producing extra content. It, it adds to the value, um, but that's a whole other argument. And then in addition to fan fiction, which is like stories and stuff that are written about your favorite um, stories based on the movies, TV shows, books that you might like, um, you would have people creating art or like taking videos and creating um, uh, video presentations with music and dialogue and, and all kinds of stuff. Um, very creative. There are tons of really creative people in the fan worlds and um, I have really been um, lucky to observe some really high quality stuff and not surprisingly there's some really low quality stuff out there. You got like seventh graders um, that are writing what they think is a brilliant story. Uh, 
about their favorite, you know, young adult fiction characters, and it's actually terrible. That's reality. Ha, ah, my hands are going crazy. Um, that's reality, and that's just how it is. But okay, 50 Shades of Grey. I got this from the library um, because I wanted to have it available to show on camera. Um, this is actually an audiobook. I just got it because this was what I could find on the shelf. And I haven't listened to it, and I'm in the middle of The Art of War, which is a classic on military strategy, so I'm really not gonna put that on hold to be listening to this. So I'm just gonna return this to the library, but I did want to show that I have it. So this was published published in 2011, uh, but it was actually self-published by the writer E.L. James, um, which you can do in the age, of, well, of any age, but in the age of the internet. What a lot of people may not know is that the stories of Fifty Shades of Grey began as fan fiction. It was the fan fiction of this very popular series right here. Um, and so apparently, well not apparently, in actuality, um, Fifty Shades of Grey started when a writer was posting her fan fiction stories, alternate universe, fan fiction stories on fanfiction.net. Remember that, fanfiction.net or ff.net, that's gonna come up a lot. And there are probably a lot of you that have never even heard of this website. But it's pretty much the biggest fan fiction site on the entire internet. You can tell because it's in the name of the site, fanfiction.net. So there are all these fan communities and you can read any level of stories from excellent to horrible. You, um, they have finished, unfinished, um, just short one paragraph stories, multi-chapter, incredibly long involved stories, what have you. They're all there on fanfiction.net. It's not the only fanfiction archive site, but it's sort of the starting off point for a lot of these. Okay, so Twilight, very popular in the mid to late 2000s. Twilight was actually published, let's find out, 2005. So in 2009, by 2009, four years later, there was some fan fiction that was pretty popular on fanfiction.net, and so the writer, um, took it off, put it on her own website, and then when it was really popular, she changed the names and changed just enough um, that she could get away with it and published it as Fifty Shades of Grey. So I don't have any opinion on the content of the stories themselves or the, the value of the writing. I have not read them, and um, so I have no judgment to offer on that. But, as someone who is a fan and who participates in fandoms, no, I don't write fan fiction, but I have edited fan fiction for friends that do write it, um, I would say that there's a little bit more going on beneath the surface, so to speak. Is it okay to write something based on someone else's characters and then if you change the names, you publish it and make millions of dollars? Let's face it, okay? There are some gray areas here. Now, just to be clear, I am not accusing the writer of Fifty Shades of Grey of plagiarism. I am not an expert on copyright law, and I have, you know, no dog in this fight. I think that if there was a claim to be made of plagiarism, the writer of the Twilight series would have been able to have a very successful lawsuit. She has millions and millions of dollars, and influence in the publishing industry and she could have, you know, sued. So I would say that there's not a case to be made that there was plagiarism. But what is at stake, in my opinion, is integrity. There is a, cer a certain amount of integrity in fandom and there's a code of conduct, an unwritten set of rules about how people behave with respect to the creator of their fandom and with other fans. Um, and a lot of this has to do with um, the beautiful human tendency that we have to create stories and to participate in stories by observing them, watching them, reading them. Um, the stories that we read or watch when we're young 
um, often become part of our character, part of our personality, and they shape our values. And these are really crucial integral parts of who we are. It's part of what it means to be a human being. The urge to make stories and to, to listen to or um, live through stories is universal to, to humanity. And I think it's a beautiful thing, um, but it's also a thing that's fraught with lots and lots of gray areas. So this enters into what um, one facet of what I think of as the dark side of fandom. There are actually a lot of dark sides of fandom. Um, for example, Rule 34. If you know what that is, good for you. If you don't know, I'm not explaining it. You can look it up. But there, there is a little. There are a lot of dark and scary people in the world, and with the internet, people can contact other dark and scary people on the opposite sides of the world at all hours of the day. And so it really became evident once the, the internet age came about, especially in some of these more quirky niches of, of uh, let's say, science fiction fantasy kind of thing.